another Eastern Conference Finals play or yeah, Eastern Conference Finals game, another blowout. And this one might actually be the worst one we will see in this playoffs. The Boston Celtics absolutely dismantled the Miami Heat uh, to tie the series back up two games to two, heading back to Miami now. Um, and really, before I get into Boston, this was a, an absolutely abysmal effort from the Heat. You know it's bad when you start hearing things like worst since 1970s, worst since ever, worse than the modern era. Like when you start hearing like stats like that, you know something has gone terribly wrong. So the Heat were without Tyler Hero tonight. Um, don't think it would have made much of a difference. Boston came out with a sense of urgency, and this game was almost essentially over in the first five minutes. Uh, it took eight and a half minutes for Miami to score a bucket. They had one point for what felt like ever, and over eight and a half minutes to get the first bucket. They were 0 for 15 to start the game, and it just it snowballed down from there. The Boston Celtics came out aggressive and just never let up. And to be honest, this is what Boston needed. They showed that urgency that was missing in game three. And really, it's just, it's so weird because this has been a series of blowout after blowout after blowout, just alternating back and forth. But it's weird to see, you know, the effort shift so drastically just from one game to the next when the games are every other day. It's like, what happens in that day? So for the Heat, the starters combined for 18 points. That is right. 18 points between all of the starters. Uh, Jimmy Butler was 3 for 16 for 6 points. Bam Adebayo finished with 9 points. Um, Jimmy Butler, a big thing for, um, for his game. He did miss the second half of Game 3 with an injury. Played tonight. Um... Played 28 minutes, um, could be partly because of the injuries still lingering, could be because it was over in about 20 minutes. Um, don't really know about that, but did not look right, and more importantly, just was not getting the whistles. And he's one of those players that lives for contact. He's already said earlier on in the series that he's living for that contact, so not getting to the free throw line is greatly inhibiting what he's going to do. Um... And I don't know if it was Boston playing that good of defense or a little home cooking from the refs because Scott Foster was on this game. And it is um, a surprising coincidence, if you're into NBA conspiracy theories, that the Heat attempted 16 free throws, or not even, 14 free throws. And the Boston Celtics, as a team, attempted 38. Eight free throws with Jason Tatum attempting 16 on his own. So Jason Tatum shot more free throws than the entire Miami Heat team. So part of this, yes, was defense. Boston did not have Marcus Smart yet again, uh, but didn't really look like they needed him. Um, this defense, and in particular Al Horford, really just dominated the Heat whenever they had the ball. The, the Boston defense was smothering. And Al Horford was the anchor behind it. And it's wild to say that he made Bam Adebayo look absolutely pedestrian. But after how good Bam was in Game 3, kind of kind of felt like he had turned a corner. Like he'd figured it out and he was going to maintain that, that superstar level of play that everyone knows that he's capable of. But instead, he looked passive, he looked rushed, he looked flustered. And he was just making all sorts of bad decisions that are uncharacteristic for him. So the huge shout out to Al Horford leading the charge as the defensive anchor. Uh, he finished with four blocks. Yeah, sorry. Four blocks, 13 rebounds, and he only took two shots. That's a low maintenance type of anchor to have. He only needs two shots. He only made one. 33 minutes and he just did it all defensively and his ability to switch and to keep up with Bam and to make it even harder for him really helped the Celtics maintain this lead into the second half. The end of the third quarter, the Heat had 52 points. That's insane to me to think about. 
they were held to 52 points. Victor Oladipo came off the bench and outscored the entire starting lineup for the Heat himself. He was probably the only bright spot. You could also argue Duncan Robinson finally getting more minutes um, with Tyler Hero out. Had a, a strong game given how long it's been since he's played. Um, four of eight from three, I believe. Still defensively not what you want, but with Hero out, it did open um, the door for him. It felt like still a lot of his minutes were in garbage time, so it wasn't really a chance to see him in that starting lineup running with those guys. But more importantly, Victor Oladipo was basically all they had tonight, and he delivered. He looked exactly like we've come, um, we've become accustomed to seeing from him. And he finished 23 points, outscored the starting lineup himself, shot well from three, which isn't usually his strong point, and finished with one of the highest plus minuses for the team uh, with a plus nine, which tells you just about everything you need to know. Uh, the Heat actually hit more threes, if that type of stat matters to you. And now, after all of this back and forth, the series goes back to Miami. No word on what Marcus Smart's status will be. Robert Williams played today and absolutely ate Bam Adebayo's lunch as well. Don't know if, you know, if maybe he'll rest the next game with knee soreness or what the plan's going to be for him. Um, who knows with Jimmy Butler, Tyler Hero. Kind of just feels like this is turning into a war of attrition between the two teams. Um, I'm just shocked that after what we've seen from the Heat as far as, like, their scoring outbursts, that they'd get held to 82 points like this. Like, wild and I just don't understand the lack of energy especially from a team like the Heat like they looked like they were over it by about the halfway point like by about half time it looked like they were like do we just not come back out like they had 33 points at halftime it's unbelievable in a playoff game in the Eastern Conference Finals like the team that is all culture all all heart all heat culture musters 33 points and everyone just looked like they didn't want to be there. So, I really don't know. I don't know what to make of this. I think the fact that Boston won by 20 points despite Jalen Brown having another terrible shooting game. He had that unbelievable game three that they lost. And then tonight, 5 of 20. For, still plus 23. Still making plays on the, uh, the defensive end. But it's just crazy for Boston to get this win this way with basically Tatum leading the way as the only big scorer and everyone else just kind of contributing where they can and focusing on defense. So it feels, I, I shudder to say this, it feels like Boston has figured stuff out as far as how the rest of this series is going to go. But I've said that before, I've thought that before, and it immediately goes away. So I'm not going to get too confident in that. It feels like something might have changed in this series, though. Miami may just not have what it what they need to match up with Boston, with Boston playing like this. But we also haven't seen them string two games like that together, back to back in the Eastern Conference Finals. So I don't know what to expect. You could tell me literally anything happens in Game Five, and I would probably believe you. So. We'll see. Uh, please, if you have thoughts, let me know in the comments. If you have predictions on what you think Game 5 might be like. Um, if Boston is now the favorite. Uh, just whatever whatever you think. Or if you want to get into like the conspiracy theories on the officiating stuff, I live for it. Let's Please let me know. Please share it. Um, otherwise, Game 4 tonight. The Warriors with a chance to close out the Mavericks in Dallas in heartbreaking fashion for Dallas. Uh, that'll be tonight. Drop your thoughts on that as well if you'd like. Um, probably be back with a recap for that one tomorrow. Uh, other than that, enjoy the game tonight. Thank you for watching and peace.